before we wrap it up, I do yeah. want to talk about uh, Irredeemable and Incorruptible sure. as well. As well. So you've, you're, you're taking, in both comics, you're taking the, the image of, of a hero, what a hero is and what a villain is right. uh, and, and kind of turning it around right. um, without making it too 90s gritty or anything else like that. Right. You're, you know, you, 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 when, when a hero uh, turns, he turns for, you know, for a reason. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about the both books? A little well, bit? yeah, sure. I mean, Irredeemable is obviously the, the story of what happens when the world's greatest superhero just finally is worn down to the point where he becomes the world's greatest supervillain, where he just, the idea that if you're doing this for the typical superhero reasons, if you do, you know, if you do your job as a superhero, then, you know, there, you got a support group, you got other other teammates, you got other people who understand how you feel and so forth, but, but if you're somebody like the Plutonian, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're doing it. You're doing this job because you want to be loved, because you want to not to feel alone, because you want other people to admire you. And and and, and there's a there's a real sort of sad, venal quality to that that does not make him a bad guy, but at the same time, it's just it's 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 sad. And he and he doesn't. He needs. He, I'm sorry. I just got distracted by no, that. No, 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 go ahead. Um, he needs, you know, he needs these. Wow, I'm sorry. I, man, I completely lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. He's venal and, and, and he needs, he needs reassurance from. Uh, well, yeah, from yeah, yeah. Well, he needs, yeah, he needs to, you know, he needs. He's doing this because he ultimately he wants to be liked. He wants to be loved. He wants, and that's a terrible reason to do anything. Oh, of course. Of course. And, and and so and and the other thing he has to live under the pressure of, and this is this is truer now than it ever was in our society, in our 24/7 news, you know, a news cycle society, is that. He lives in a world where you can save the world a thousand times, but if you make one little mistake or you're caught in one split second where you're not being the the most noble of heroes, it's all wiped away. It's all forgotten. It's all anybody yeah. cares about is they're all waiting. We're all waiting for our heroes to fall. We're all building people up so we can make them fall. Oh, of course, of course. And that's because that's what we enjoy as a society. And so to, to write a superhero who who is who has cr collapses under that pressure is what really intrigued me about this book. Well, and there's and there's there's a certain freedom in in then accepting that you are going to be a villain right. and, you, and you don't have to abide by any of those rules. That's just any it, yeah. of, any of uh, you right. know, you don't care about the 24th news cycle. Right. You don't care about any of that. In, in fact, you can revel in it at yeah. that point. Exactly. Um, and so I think so I think the body count in the book is up to about eight million or something like that. <laughs> um, but I tell you the, the trick of writing the book, and the, and this is the thing that I I wasn't as successful with with the first couple of issues, but I think I got a handle on, is that. It's easy to write violence. It's much harder to write evil. And the trick is, it's, it's, I mean, it would be, I realize about issue four, like I, I'm running out of ways for him to blow stuff up. That's not, I mean, it's interesting for the first couple of issues because you're not used to seeing that, but after a while, there has to be a reason to what he does. There has to be, there, it's, it's more interesting to see him be insidious than it is for him to be actively evil. It's, yeah. it's more I, like I, I really like the, um, the moment in issue five when basically he puts out a broadcast to the entire world, just reminding them that he could be right now living among them, and he could be the guy standing next to you, and you don't know, the, like the, the immigrant who just moved in down the hall, or the new yeah. guy on the job. That could be me, and sent that, and so, and suddenly it's like there's riots all over the world because people are panicking. That's pure, yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's evil. That, that's, that's evil. That's exactly. That's that's just not you know killing someone. That's not picking up a mountain and throwing it at a city. That's doing something much worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because then you're 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 uh, lowering people's trust in their fellow man, which you're you're making them do the work for you. Yeah. At that at that point. Yeah. And so conversely. Uh, Talk about making a villain into a hero a little bit. Well, that was, I mean, that was, honestly, that was as much, a, it gave me a voice for my response to Katrina, if you will, oddly oh, okay. enough. It was, you know, Max Damage was the world's greatest villain. Plutonian loses his mind, goes nuts, and now this guy who would have gladly traded punches with Plutonian and has many a time in the past, still, he's, even the worst supervillain doesn't want the world to end. No. There's no percentage in that. There's no, you know, you want what you want and you want power and you want money and what you, whatever you want, but you don't want the world to end. You, and, and, and the thing that everybody knew about the Plutonian, everybody in the world, including Max, including every supervillain there is, is that, okay, we all, you know, some of those villains hate Plutonian, but everybody knows at the end of the day, if the world is at stake, he will be the one who steps up and saves us. Sure. 
And when I, you know, I think that the, I think that Hurricane Katrina, and I think that the, the, the real takeaway from Katrina, for as a nation for us, sure. um, was not just the horrible devastation. But it was the idea that, and this may sound naive to to our young to your younger viewers. This may sound naive to anybody under the age of 25. <laughs> but I, I grew up in an era, and, and, and I grew up in a generation where we were taught to believe that in a moment of absolute catastrophic crisis like that, that the government would be there to step in and to help. I agree. I agree. And Katrina proved exactly the opposite. Yeah. That. There is no one there. That, that when push came to shove, you know, I mean, I, government did what it could, but it wasn't. It wasn't the backstop there that we thought it was going to be. And it was that was the real horror of it to me. And I wanted to tap into that. I wanted to to get with with Max Damage this idea of, wow, plutonium has gone insane. Yeah. And if he is our fail safe against against everything in the world, and he's gone. Then what do we do? The, what that that absolute horror that Max feels, uh, that the void, uh, you know, uh, that has been created by this, he realizes. Well, I, somebody has to step up, and as the next most powerful guy on the planet, I guess it's my job to step up. And and I guess a lot of, a lot of the times that's what defines a hero. Yeah. Uh, is is someone stepping up and doing something that no one else is willing to do. Right. Now, um, you know, what's interesting about him, I think, as a character is that he doesn't know, and this sounds more comical than I think it comes across in the book, but I do like the, the sort of black humor of it. He doesn't really know what a superhero does. It's not like there's a big laundry list of here's the thing that, that superheroes do. He just knows superheroes don't do what supervillains do. So basically, his he basically just, every instinct he has as a supervillain, he just turns it around. That's his guy. Does the opposite. Does the opposite. It's all, every day is opposite day for Max Damage. You know, I've got a, I've got a 16-year-old sidekick named Jailbait. Well, I'm not going to touch her with a 10-foot pole. You know, I've got a, I got a safe full of stolen money that I've, I've lifted over the years. I'm going to torch it and, and, and turn it all into cinders because it's, it's blood money. You know, it's, I, I won't. You know, since he doesn't know where the where the where the boundaries are, since he doesn't know where the line between superhero and supervillain is, yeah. and, and and how much wiggle room there is there, his attitude is I would rather f I'd rather fail on the side of being conservative, and being inflexible. And actually, as we're going to see in the second story arc, that is also an enormous weakness that he that he doesn't realize that he has. Oh, okay. It's going to be a huge character weakness for him is his inflexibility in a world where you know what you like it or not. You have to find some flexibility in it, in or else it will destroy you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, awesome. I can't wait to read that. that cool. Thanks. Been great. Uh, we will let you go, though. I will. Uh, give me thirty more seconds. Oh, to just want to say, of course. Yeah, of course. Mark Wade loves compassionate conservatives. This is the God's honest truth. I really do. I just, you know, but I don't. I don't need no hate mail from the Tea Party because that will not go well with me. I'm just saying. <laughs> since this, I just want to make sure that we're abundantly clear on I, that. I think we were very clear on that. That we weren't. We weren't. We're not. We're not disparaging on conservatives in general. No. no. We are just disparaging the the, the, the the lunatic fringe of any, of, of any, of any uh, it, whether it be the the. I mean, again, I have you know, I, I you know what, I feel the same way about PETA. I feel the same way about PETA. You I'm know, a vegetarian, PETA. but I don't yeah, like but, PETA. But I don't like PETA either. And if PETA comes after me, I feel the same way as I would if the Tea Party did, which is like you, you're the radical fringe, and you make me insane. So get lost. If, yeah, PETA, yeah. if PETA came to you saying, please don't kill animals in your comic book, I would say. I believe that you. I believe that your leader. I believe that the woman who runs PETA is a diabetic, <laughs> who uses insulin, which, <laughs> which would insane. not exist if not for animal sacrifice. And so, there you go. yeah. All right. <laughs> well, thanks for coming by, Mark. My pleasure. And, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you around again. I hope your con goes great. Ed, thanks very thanks. much.